Design Shop has a few different alphabets from, for you to choose from, at least alphabet types. So there are some that are digitized for embroidery and for the most part respect the limits of what a needle can do and what a stitch can accomplish. With those, there are some limitations. You can't go smaller than the needle that you're sewing with. Uh, you don't want to go so large that it's going to snag and pull out either. You also have access to the uh, fonts on your operating system that uh, have true type outlines. Let's look at those different alphabet types and how the stitches are applied to those and what those limitations are and how to best utilize the alphabets that are available to you. So let's first look at how do I access those and how do I change my alphabet. So I'm going to select my lettering and then when I right click and go to properties the very first box that I have is the alphabet drop-down. It's also available in my property bar. This can, can work either place. If I click on that drop-down, I have access to a bunch of different alphabet categories. So the embroidery alphabets that are in your system have been categorized. So you have the option of choosing a block type or a serif or a sans serif or a script, anything like that. We've kind of got it in these general categories. Some alphabets may appear in more than one. Um, so you may have a slab serif that appears in block and slab serif or something like that. So you may see it in multiple places, but if you're looking for a specific tile, style, you can do that. Uh, what you can also do is if you know the name that you want to use, so I want uh, children's, I can type C-H-I-L, and I'm getting all the children's stuff um, that have has children's in the name, and so I could go down to children's slab. Now notice the difference in children's slab and children's block. One has a star, one has a little caution sign. Um, the star is an OFA, uh, that's just the file extension for the file type of that alphabet. And that was digitized for embroidery. Um, you'll notice in that preview that I get a preview of the word in that typeface. And then below that, you have kind of a preview of all the characters. You also have the suggested minimum height and the suggested maximum height. So when you're dealing with embroidery alphabets, you're going to want to stay within those limits or pretty close to those limits because that's going to tell you essentially how small you can sew before you start getting possibly thread breaks because you're sewing smaller than a needle or how large you can sew before you start having stitches that may snag and pull out or uh, have a joint that the digitizer left a little bit of a gap and was planning on the push of the stitches to fill that gap in when you get big enough that gap will get big enough that will actually show so that's what those kind of guidelines are there for can you go past those Maybe, maybe not, um, but you can try. You just may need to adjust maybe your pull offset when you're going a little bit smaller to make your stitches a little bit longer, make your columns a little bit wider, make them actually able to sew. All right, so we've got the OFA that's going to be the ones that have the stars. These are going to work very, very well for you. Um, just remember to kind of stay in those guidelines. Then you also have uh, other alphabets, so uh, when we looked before we saw them with the caution sign. Um, so those are going to be older alphabets. They are embroidery alphabets if they are under any category other than true type. Um, those are, again, a little bit older. They were digitized using earlier digitizing equipment. Um, so as we have improved our, our software. We always look at improving our software. Um, our tools have improved in how we generate stitches and go along curves and those kinds of things. So the newer ones, the stars, are going to be a little bit better for you. Um, the EAs, or the embroidery alphabets with the caution sign, um, those should work fairly well for you. They may have a little bit different limitations. Um, you may need to add a little bit of pull offset to make them sew a little bit better, um, things like that. And then you also have the ability to use a true type outlined 
font from your operating system. Now, uh, those are ones that were loaded with your software uh, that came with your uh, computer or other programs like word processors or graphics uh, design, graphic design programs may load some of those uh, fonts with them. Some of the fonts that get loaded will be will have true type outlines, some will be postscript. So we can only read the true type outline ones. And the true type outline, you may see them in a TTF format, which is just a true type font. You may see an open type font. Um, open type font can have either true type outlines or postscript. So maybe half of them will show up in your design shop and the other half won't. If they don't show up, it means that it has postscript. So that's the big difference. The other kind of uh, funny thing with OpenType is OpenType has some kind of different ligatures that, that apply uh, when you have different letter combinations and it will kind of swap out a glyph on you. Well, if design, <coughs> pardon me, if design shop doesn't know how to handle that glyph, it may show up like that letter doesn't exist. Um, so keep that in mind. If you see that, that's probably an open type playing a little bit of some funny stuff on you. Um, and that's what's going on there. All right, so let's go back and take a look at uh, some of the what the true type looks like. So again, true type is a computer font. Um, they may or may not work well. I can do something um, that just definitely would work fairly well. So something like this, I can hit apply. And if I zoom in, all of my stitches are generating really fairly nicely. This one would work really fairly well. Um, when you have a true type, you also have the avail of, uh, ability to utilize you know, a bold version, which is gonna bring that up a little bit, or an italicized version, which is gonna slant it a little bit, all again from that true type file. But if you grab a true type that perhaps um, is more of a display or a little bit uh, too thin, you may end up with something that does not so well. And now I'm having a lot of trouble finding one that's not going to sew well. This one uh, might, yeah, not sew as well. You may not like how it joins some of those pieces. So if you look at how some of these stitches are being generated and how that's being done, um, that is because all of these stitches are being applied to what isn't really an embroidery alphabet. So can I change that? Yeah, I can go in and wireframe edit it. Yes, that's true. Um, is it something that you would want to do? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you would do a little bit better to find uh, an embroidery alphabet that matches it and then use that width, um, the letter width, to kind of mimic that condensed version of it. Um, if it is something that you absolutely need, that's fine. You can uh, start out with that and use it as a base and then edit it. That works really well. Um, if it's something that you're going to be doing often, this is a typeface that you're going to be using very, very frequently and it works fairly well, there's just a few pieces you don't love about it, what you can choose to do, uh, depending on your level of software, is you can modify, you can convert your true type, or at least it's considered a true type because it has true type outlines, um, you, can, you can convert that and you would go to, um, let's get back so you can see it, you would go to tools and convert alphabets and then you would grab the true type that you want to convert so in this case we were looking at this one now this one is not working so great uh, for that but I can go in and if I'm going to be using it over and over again I can edit this one time in the new true type modified font or in this case it will become an alphabet so it's actually uh, embroidery I would hit convert and that will convert it to that true type modified. It will then show up in my true type modified list. And so I can use that one that I have modified. If you want to do that, you can do that and go uh, into your alphabet editor and modify the individual letter so that when you're using the alphabet it's using your version not the automatically generated version every time so you've got uh, true type modified which allows you to do that and that's under again that sub menu 
the other option that you have depending on uh, the level of software that you have is originally I talked about the OFAs and, and how they're done with newer tools. Well, with uh, the highest level of design shop, you have the ability to create your own OFAs. So you can digitize your own alphabet if you want to. Keep in mind that if you are not a stellar digitizer, they're not going to be a stellar alphabet for you. So if you know what you're doing and really like digitizing and are a type nerd like me, um, you can completely create your own embroidery alphabets using tools and alphabet editor, but that's definitely way up there in, in the list of things to do. All right, um, let's go back and look at those categories one more time. So we've got the ones that start with a star that are in the categories listed. All right, those are gonna be your OFAs. Those are gonna give you kind of your best results. Uh, next down, I would choose an EA, which is gonna be the ones with the caution signs, but within those categories that we had talked about before. If you create your own, it's going to show up under custom. Uh, that would maybe be my next option. Um, true type, it may work, it may not. Give it a shot, edit it, see how it goes for you. If it's something you're gonna use over and over and over again, um, from a true type, you may choose to modify it and, and save it, and that would show up under your true type modified. So you've got a lot of options for typefaces, and that allows you a lot of creativity in the lettering that you will use. So take a look, see what you like, take a look at those previews, see what uh, characters are available to you, and have some fun with your lettering.